Hello everyone, welcome back to Beards, Bourbon, and Games Unboxed Edition. I'm Conqueror Corey, and look what we got. That's right, Lockhart is in the house. This is the Xbox Series S, not to be confused with the Xbox One S for grandmothers at home and parents. Don't buy your kids the last gen console, they'll be upset. Uh, this is actually the entry level version of Microsoft's next generation console. It features 512 gigabytes of SSD storage, uh, <coughs> 364. <coughs> It's not important though. It is designed for 1440p, 120 hertz gaming. We'll see about that. But I don't care about that. There's one question that no one has answered for me yet, and I must know it. Will it blend? That's fine. So taking a quick look at the box, <clears throat> uh, not much to say about the front of it, give you some things. The key thing to remember about this console is it is a disc-free console. Uh, the whole point of this is to play nothing but digital games. Um, and the main purpose of this is to really promote their Game Pass service. Um, you don't have much storage, as I mentioned earlier, there's only 364 gigabytes of that 512 available. The rest is consumed by the operating system. So keep that in mind. If you have a lot of games, um, this may not be the console for you. The X might be the console, especially if you already own the Xbox Series or the Xbox One X. Xbox One X. There we go. <clears throat> I'll get it right eventually. So flip around the back of the box here. Uh, just some general marketing stuff. How are your dreams? But uh, that's not what you watch this video for. You want to actually see it open. So uh, we'll go ahead, and as you can see there, it looks like FedEx delivered this Xbox. Uh, go over there, but we'll go ahead and open it up. There is some tape there, we just cut it, and, uh, okay. Oh, it helps if we get rid of the tape on the side. There we go, and there we go. Oh wow, that's smaller than I thought it was. So uh, we'll go ahead and slide this off here. And this is the console. I, I, I've seen it online, but I didn't realize it was this small. I think it's tiny. This is it. This is the Xbox Series S. So we got our one USB port in the front. We got our syncing button, so it's synced to your controller. We do have hardware buttons this time, so it seems like Microsoft has opted to just not even try the touchscreen approach, which they did before. Boombox vent. On the back here, we have the Ethernet, two USB uh, 3.0s, I think. HDMI out, and to the Xbox One owners, you will notice that the HDMI in is gone. Rest in peace, that, is, that feature is gone. Uh, all of the 12 people that use that will miss it. Um, then we have the storage expansion. Yes, this is a propri proprietary storage uh, connector, and it cost 200 and what was it, Mike? Fifteen dollars? Nineteen. Two hundred nineteen dollars. So, if if you buy a lot of digital games and you don't want to download and transfer it, you may run into a problem here because by the time you buy the, the storage expansion, you will already be in the Xbox Series X range. So just keep that in mind. But that's not what this console is for. This console is for the entry level, maybe the folks that just, you know, right now times are hard. The economy is hard. Uh, parents just want to get their kids a next generation console. And if they don't care about using Game Pass or downloading digital, this is the answer. It's a cheap way. It's only $300 to get you in to some of the next generation gaming. So, all right. So, and of course we got our power connector, which seems like Microsoft has opted to go for Universal to match with the Xbox One S and One X connectors. I believe you can actually, yeah, that's the same connector, so cool. All right, we're gonna set this aside here. I can't get over how small that is. 
All right, in the box also we have the HDMI cable. I always like the quality of the HDMI cables that Microsoft gives in their consoles. I don't know, they just feel like a, they feel like a step above the others for some reason. Of course we have the power, power connector here. Nothing much to say about that. And here's the one I'm interested in now, is to see the controller. Open that up to feel what this feels like. So it actually feels kind of like an Xbox One X controller. Um, oh, got batteries. But, uh, ooh, I like that. I like that a lot, actually. Um, so you're not really missing a whole lot here. If you've held an Xbox One X controller or one uh, Xbox One controller, it's pretty much the same. Microsoft has kept that approach. Now they did change some things that this trigger is textured now, which is feels really good in the hands. It's that's one thing I've, I've always liked Xbox controllers in the sense that they've always felt good in the hands. Even when starting with the Xbox 360, um, it's just a comfortable controller design now. Granted, some would argue that the PS4 has a very comfortable controller design, and I can't argue with them on that. It is a good controller. So I think we've come a long way when it comes to controllers. Um, the trigger doesn't really have a click to it, but I don't think the last one did either. I don't know, it just feels a little spongy, the back trigger. So that, that's something I would like. I would actually like the little, little bit more tactile feedback like the shoulder buttons do, but I understand the decision for it. Keep it quiet. Um, Joysticks feel really nice. The buttons feel nice. There is a new, I think that is an upload button. Uh, that's different than the console. And of course, they did change the D-pad a little bit there. Um, the D-pad is what it is. I don't think anybody beats Nintendo when it comes to D-pads because they have their own patent. But uh, really nice. I do like that they included the headphone jack at the bottom of this one. Uh, that's really good if you, let's say that you share a living room with your wife or kids and you don't want to interrupt them while gaming, you don't want your noises. Uh, certain scenes of games you don't want them to hear. Plug that in, it plays over your headset, so that's really, really good. Alright. I'm trying to see if we got a cord in here. And I don't think we do. Oh, and another thing that has changed is they do, it does use a USB-C now. We finally upgraded into the USB-C territory. Micro USB is probably on its way out. And then, of course, you got the battery chamber here. Never understood why they just don't include Maybe for cost, but I'd like to see a rechargeable control battery in there, but that's little things. Okay. And that is all for the contents. All right, so we have generations of consoles here. We do not have an Xbox One S. Uh, however, you get the idea. It is smaller than the original Xbox One, and uh, the Xbox One X is a little bit smaller than the the S, I think. But um, so this is the original launch day version of the Xbox One, aka the VCR. Um, so we can look a little bit at the front panel console, and I think it's funny how they, how Microsoft and Sony seem to do this. And I guess they finally learned a lesson for this generation: is there is a touch sensor there that's not a button. Um, when they went to the Xbox One X and S. It actually went to a physical button, and it looks like for the new Series S and Series X, they decided just to keep that hardware button. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Um, we got our eject button here. Touch, again, touch sensitive. Microsoft is real big about doing touch um, on this first iteration. So you can kind of see the size comparison here. Wow, is this thing tiny. I mean, this thing is... I feel like I could throw it in my backpack and take it anywhere I want to go. So I can really see this being good if you're traveling, if you do a lot of flying, and you want to take your console with you, man, the S would be so easy to pack in and out of airports. Like, you don't even have to check it, just carry on. Um, so not much to say about the front there. We do got the disk drives here, the disk drive for the X is here, uh, and the disk drive is nowhere on this because, again, this is a diskless console. All right, so let's change up to the side here to give kind of a side comparison. So as you can see, Microsoft has really gotten good at condensing down the size of their console. Hey, look at dominoes. They're expensive dominoes. <laughs> so without me giving horrible sound effects, let's go on and go to the the rear I.O. 
of the consoles. Wow, the original Xbox had a whole lot of I.O. on the back. Um, so you can see that it does have the HDMI in um, on this. They, again, that's gone. Even on the X, I don't believe they even had that on the Series X anymore. Um, so you, you can't watch TV on your TV with your Xbox anymore. Blame Phil Spencer for that. Alright, so not much to say here. Uh, they did go from a proprietary connector to a standard two-pin, uh, two two-prong connector. And they did drop the digital uh, plug-in. So if you got a digital system, maybe have to find a converter or pursue another option. I don't, even, I don't even think the Series X has that anymore. So there you go. That'll give you a little bit of a size comparison. I got to admit, I did not expect it to be this small. I knew it was small, but actually holding one in your hands versus seeing it in the video, just, uh, yeah, it, uh, hmm. I was shocked. Uh, the material does feel a lot cheaper. Kind of, actually, yeah. feels kind of similar. But, uh. All right, we'll focus on the controllers next. So this is the Xbox One controller. Now this is the early version because it does not have the 3.5 millimeter jack at the bottom. Uh, so we have the analog sticks, the directional pad. Uh, I don't know if I'm a fan, if I like this one better than this one. This one does feel nice though. I think for the fighters, this one's actually maybe better. It kind of took inspiration from the Pro Controller. And of course, we're missing that upload share button. Okay, and then at the top, only difference is we, hit, we now have USB C instead of micro USB. And this is actually smooth instead of the texture we feel here. So that was a nice addition. That feels really good on the hands and fingers. Um, so, yeah, good job, Microsoft. All right, so that's it for today's comparison video. Um, I want to give a huge shout out to our friend Anthony for letting us borrow his Xbox One S. Um, we didn't blend it, but uh, thank, him, uh, thank you, Anthony, for giving this to us, let us uh, review on the channel today. Um, if you like this episode, be sure to click that like button. If you want to see more of our content, including the Xbox Series X video, uh, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Until then, I'm Corey the Conqueror, and we'll see you.